What's good? <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> so, so I'm on YouTube Live. I'm on Periscope Live. I'm on Facebook Live. I'm on the Ping. <laughs> I'm actually like letting people know what's going down. Welcome to the Playroom, everybody. This is a a great show where you're about to really understand some things. And um, we're talking about relationships. So feel free to open up, be informed, understand. And if you have any questions about this, questions we're about to bring out, just feel free to, you know, put in the description and we can definitely get to you. I haven't been live for a long time. So this is kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> so um it's your boy Flay Beats. First and foremost, I have a lot to tell you guys. Um hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. We're gonna talk about relationship goals. And I really wanna stretch across relationship goals tonight. And not just relationship goals, you know, in marriage relationships weddings dates it's all round with business how do you interact with people when you get on a on a networking event how are you able to get through to your audience how are you able to give people that knowing reason that hey this is what i want to do this is what i want to be this is where i want to be and how am i going to get there so um i have a special guest with me in the background and if you guys want to raise your hands if you want to answer any questions, feel free. This is my first room. So I'm also going live on my podcast as well. We don't play podcast. And I'm also live on YouTube, Periscope, and Facebook right now. So it's it's a great topic that we want to have today. And if you're on Twitter, you can be able to, you know, follow on Flav Beats and you, we can be able to talk from there. And today I want to talk about relationship goals. And I have some questions and these questions, if you guys have your answers, please raise your hand. I'll definitely bring you up here because we're going to be here for about an hour. And it's strictly an hour. So I don't want to take too much of your time, but I want to get in. So the first question I want to ask, and <clears throat> I want to hear from you too. Um, why are people shy to introduce themselves? Hello. Hey. <laughs> What's up? Nothing much. Nothing much. What are you thinking? Why are people shy to introduce themselves sometimes? Because they don't like people. They don't like people? No. So, I mean, how will you like people? Like, tell me, how would you like people if you don't like people? I don't, like, you have like to like someone. If you don't how like you, people, then you're not going to want to introduce yourself to people. You're not going to introduce yourself to people, right? But... The person that you're meeting, like the people that I'm meeting right now, I've probably never met them before. But because we're speaking, we're meeting. So Maybe they're, because they're introvert or something, I don't know. Okay. But for me, I don't. If I meet people, I make people cool. But I'm not gonna go to that person first. You're gonna come to me first. Okay. Here. Okay. I'd like to hear from you, Ari. Yeah, I think she kind of hinted towards what I was gonna say. I think, especially for Africans, we're very proud. Mm -hmm. And people don't like to look like they're trying. So to walk up to someone and introduce yourself just seems like, ah, you know, they should come to me. And I think that's really the issue. Right. But for people who are outgoing, you know, they understand that talking to people, building relationships is just natural. Or it's, easy, it's easier for some than others. Mm -hmm. And another aspect of it is um, sometimes you don't know what to say. Like if someone says you know introduce yourself people are really nervous because they don't know how to describe who they are you know or maybe they don't have any accolades that they could brag about you know it's just a very touchy subject but if you're someone who has a strong sense of like identity then if someone asks you who are you then you're able to just answer but not everyone has that that's a great point yeah not everyone has that and it's also dealing with a lot of public speaking and 
just being out there trying to express yourself in the most simple way possible because you can't really be everything at once within the first few seconds of meeting somebody. So it's like that first foot, that first step you make is really what counts because if you don't make a good impression, the person might leave either from a cultural perspective or from a natural standpoint or just from an offset. You know, anything can take someone off. Maybe you wore the wrong you know, perfume, you know, maybe you wore the wrong shoe, you know, it could be anything, but how you present yourself really, really, it's great. And somebody on Facebook just said, she has a great point right there. And that goes out to Ori and also goes out to you, Adessa. Like it's, it's, it's true. Things, things happen. And when things happen that way, you're able to create stories that, you know, last longer when you're able to express yourself in the most pure way possible and this leads to my next question which is what is your first intention or instinct when you want to know someone okay what do you think Ori um it depends on the setting it depends on you know why I'm at the place so if it's like a party then of course you go there because you want to be seen you want to be noticed or look cute and so for that purpose like you want to meet someone either to build a friendship or if it's a guy you want to get to know him possibly get him to ask for your number that kind of thing but if it's like a networking event then you know you introduce yourself so that you can um, connect and market yourself, market whatever it is that you're selling. So I think it just depends on the setting. Okay. You mentioned two settings, and I'll, I'll start with the first one because that really gives a good segue to the third question. Because, like you mentioned, a number. If you see someone, how, how do you want to receive that information? Like, sometimes it could be a setting. It could be some kind of setting that, you know, takes place that you may not even have the opportunity to get that number. You may just have opportunity to get the card, but you don't know how it's going to happen because you have no idea how you guys are going to react the first time on meeting. So for you, how how open are you on that first meeting to the point where that person can open themselves up to, you know, you know, give you a number or a card? Um, to be safe, I always give people my Instagram or my socials just because uh, sometimes people... Um, when they get your number, they kind of take advantage. Like, I've, I've met someone through a friend mm-hmm. who just randomly FaceTimed me one night, and I was like, whoa, I don't know you well enough for that, you know? So whoa. I think to start off, I'll do... <laughs> right, like, I'll do um, some kind of social media platform. That way you can also vet who that person is. Like, when you see the kind of things they post, the kind of things they say, then you get an idea of who they are. So it's easier to make your decision of, do I want to continue building a friendship or relationship or whatever with this person or do you want to just leave it on the socials so that's my my first response does it ever get past the socials you know the thing is the ones that have sense (laughs) it doesn't is the ones that don't have sense that want to move past the socials so that's why i have Mm -hmm. that there's barrier Mm -hmm. to protect myself so i like that okay what do you think and so you have to filter people out. And that's also because I design and um, that's why I have two phones. So one of my phones when I, with my um, business card has my social and my phone number. But um, it does get tricky because it's like, who is this person? You know, why are they calling me? Why are they text me? Sometimes they will send a message. Sometimes um, they'll just call me randomly and I'll pick up. So that's the only frustrating part about that. But the good thing, too, is I can leave my phone because there's a small home and I'm not going to get bothered. Or mm. whatever the case may be. And if they're serious, they'll leave a voice note. Want me a voicemail. Mm. Um, and also, I think back to your first, I mean, your second question. Um, I feel sometimes, because I'm getting to this point in my life, you know, I'm almost 30. It's like, when I meet somebody, how can we benefit each other? How can we help each other and grow? and whatever the business may be, business to business, personal communication, whatever the case may be, um, I just want to make sure that each 
relationship I create moving forward is going to be beneficial on both parts. How can I help you? How can you help me? Because this society is just, it's getting trickier each day. Yeah, it, it, it is. You're, that's really, really true, especially even in Atlanta. You know, you you don't know who's who and you don't want to be too forward because you don't want to, you know, strike the wrong nerve. So it's it's really, really amazing. And um, just a little quick segue. Somebody from Twitter just said, yo, can I get in a beat for review? Well, you can just check it out. Check Flav Beats on Twitter and follow me. If you're on the clubhouse, you can click the links in my profile and you can be able to reach out to me and Google that. So it's it's a great point that you're mentioning, babe, because now it's like when you when you have two phones now when you give a number and that person leaves a voicemail, you now decide to take that initiative and say, okay, this is what I want to do. And this person is as serious as they are as they came to me. Because yeah. if you now meet them in person, you take them seriously rather than thinking they're just someone that's wasting your time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And... Would you say that you have any questions to ask or do you go with the flow? Um, no, specific questions. And then as you ask the questions, then you start going with the flow. But make sure that these questions are pertaining, you know, what that topic is. If it's business, let's keep it in business. If it's personal, you know, um, and not to diverge to random things. Mm. If it's like a social, like a networking event. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because some guys would, you know, they would go to a networking event thinking, okay, we can get some networking going, Mm -hmm. thinking that, okay, she's probably thinking business mode, but I can still think of taking her out for coffee. So it's like, how do you balance those? And then sometimes it could be good intention. You you never know who that person may be, but because you're in that setting, you don't want to set the wrong tone, but at the same time, you don't want to, you don't want to leave that, you know, open mm-hmm. um you just let let them know your intention to make it clear so even if they're trying to take you out you let them know like hey i'm not interested i'm just here for business i'm in a relationship i'm a, i have a boyfriend or i'm content with what i have or mm. whatever the case may be just say hey you know i'm not looking for a relationship i'm just looking for um partnership not partnership per se but like um a business partner or um I don't know, someone I could just network with in the future. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. What about you, Ori? Sorry, I walked away. What was the question? No, um, just based on what we're talking about on first meeting, you know, when you first meet someone, do you have questions to ask prior to meeting them in that instinct or reaction, or do you go with the flow just based on what happens after? Yeah, like I said before, it depends on the setting. So if you're trying to market yourself or build like a business relationship, then of course you should have some questions or show interest in something that the person would be impressed with. But if it's any other type of relationship, then just let things happen naturally. Mm. Okay. I like that. And I I had this question in mind and it, it really blew my mind when I actually found out you know i was like i don't even know the answer myself who would you approach first in a networking event a guy or a lady like think about it it's a really hard question that's a very interesting question right i mean i didn't think about it i was just you know figuring out what kind of questions would be in it but how would that be you know like how do you how do you base that you know, I think I think it depends on your profession. So, like, if you're a woman in engineering, you're probably a minority. So, like, you have to you probably have to um, network with other men. Or if you see a woman, you're like, oh, we're both women, and then you'll. I feel like people gravitate towards their same sex. For me, I would definitely go up to a woman first, mm. um, just because once again, I gravitate towards my same sex, but. Um, if someone who is a man has something interesting to say, I, I would also walk up to him. But that's just my opinion. Okay. Mm. Okay. I think I would walk up to a guy first. Wow. Okay. Why? What, what makes the difference? Because sometimes guys are more open, especially when they're talking to other women. At least 
from my experiences, I get more information talking to a guy than I do with women because I feel like sometimes women do not like to disclose certain um, information, whether it be, oh, what perfume are you wearing? They're not going to tell you the perfume. You know, that's a common thing. Mm. Um, or, or where did you get this from or that from? They're not going to disclose that. But if you ask a guy, hey, you know, depending on who that, I feel like the guys in, in most cases or some cases are willing to help push you forward. Mm. You know, like almost with our encounters. Like, right. You know, meeting you and all the guys I've met in the past, they've always wanted to help me with my business, leverage my business, take my business to the next level. Even guys, they'll tip me more or they'll even tip me in general, you know? Mm. Um, so, yeah. But that's that's amazing to, to think about because now I imagine like how we met, you know? It was purely on business it was and there was no like nobody had any business incentive to say hey you know this is what i want to do i want to take you out there was nothing like that going on but slowly it just grew and then it just happened that you know we found each other again through social media funny enough you know but at the same time it's like <laughs> you think about now when you meet people you know in real life on social media are you the same person you know, like, what if I was being a facade? What if I were talking and talking in block texts back to back? And then when I meet you, I'm so quiet. Now you're wondering, am I the same person or am I using a robot, you know, an AI system to reply? So exactly. it's like, how how authentic are you in your first encounter? And those things really make or break your relationships. So that's a that's a really great point, you know, you had there. And... It's like when I think about networking, I just go straight into like the first meeting. And usually in the first meeting, people have this incentives of saying, OK, let's go out for coffee. Let's go out for lunch. Let's go out for dinner. But now when we get to that spot, who pays first? Everyone pays for their own stuff. Thank you. That's a very straightforward answer. What do you think, Ori? Sorry, I think whoever invited the other person should pay. That's a hard one. I um I think But to add, I think it's I think it's a cultural question cuz as a Nigerian, yeah. Typically if someone invites you, that person's paying. That's like the cultural norm, but I know that if I'm hanging out with my American friends, then I'm probably going to pay for myself. So I think it depends on your culture. Yeah, I do want hmm. to add something too. Um, I do see it as Nigerian culture. That's how it should be. But a lot of like, like you know, someone says, hey, come to my birthday party at Fogo Day Child. Everyone is paying for themselves, you know? <laughs> but if it's like a business type thing, like, yeah. hey, let's go out for coffee. Or I'm trying to pick your brain. So let me take you out to the, you know, a for lunch or something like that. Mm. The person who does ask will, you know, pay. It's, it's right for them to pay, right? If you're taking your coworker or maybe your boss or something like that because it's a meeting, right? Then right. at the end of the day, sometimes the business pays for that meal. That's a very good point. Exactly. And if you think about the business aspect of it and then you tie down and say, okay, this is where... I'm coming through with this kind of incentive, but at the same time, you've chosen a place that you want to meet. So that place you want to meet, sometimes it may not be up to that person's budget. You know what I mean? So you may say, okay, because I chose this place, then I'm going to pay for it. But probably I chose this place thinking that it would help the business or the meeting or the aesthetics, but I'm not able to finance that. So it's like, how do you meet those two curves? Because it's like, it sounds like a double standard, but at the same time, it's like, I got to take a risk. So it's more like, am I, am I the person that's supposed to say, like you mentioned right just now, you said that if I say I'm taking you out or that's incentive, then I should be able to pay. But now what if I don't mention anything about payment? What if we're having a birthday and I say everybody show up and I never said everybody's paying for themselves. When we get there, 
Are you going to think you're paying for yourself? Or are you going to think that someone's going to pay for you? You're paying for yourself. All the birthday dinners I've gone to, I paid for myself. Okay. I think what people do is, like, if they, if they got it, they'll tell you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, lunch is on me, dinner's on me. But yeah. if they don't say anything, then just know that you're paying for yourself. Exactly. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. 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 I like that idea. And it, it, it takes it takes a, a person that, you know, has that confidence to really put that finance down and say, this is what I want. This is what I need. And I'm able to follow through because at the end of the day, that relationship or that business you've created could end up paying for the rest of your bills, you know? So it's like, how are you building that foundation? How are you building that strong, solid connection from the go so that the person is not thinking about the monetary gain, but rather... You know, what is the value? What is the, the upbringing? What is the offer? And it's like when you think about, you know, qualities. Now, if we're talking about dating and we're going to get closer to, you know, probably 930 because I'm thinking I'm like, OK, you know, this is the first good room and I want to see how this can keep going. So maybe we could keep it into 30 minutes not to keep everybody, you know, in here. But I'll close with this question. I really want to know what you guys think. What are the qualities you see first when you see a guy? Like the person is, yeah. Let me just let me just leave it like that. What's the answer? <laughs> let me not even complicate it. Say it again. Um, the question is, what is the first thing? Like, what is the quality you see in a guy? Like, you already think about what you want to talk about. You already want to meet this person. Like, you already attracted in some form or fashion but in terms of quality in terms of appeal what do you look out for first you want me to go okay I think when I was younger like in um, college I used to focus so much on physical appearance like he needs to be beer gang he needs to be six foot tall. He needs to make six figures. He needs to have a six pack. But like, <laughs> as I've gotten older, <laughs> the three sixes. Um, as I've gotten older, I think I pay more attention to how a man handles his life and how he treats people. Because I think it's more telling of his character. Like, <clears throat> I pay attention a lot to people's social skills because I know everyone's in different places. But if you just kind of watch how someone is in a group setting or in a social setting, you can learn a lot about them. Like, do they talk over people? Are they patient? Are they good listeners? Um, you know, just those little, like, unspoken... What is the, what is the word? Like, um, unspoken language? I can't remember the actual term for that, but that kind of thing. I think that's what I pay attention to more. And then also asking him questions... Or if I was going to, like, get to know someone better, I want to see how he manages his time. Like, does he have good time um, time management skills? Does he manage his money well? Like, you don't need to be making a lot of money, but, like, are you doing okay with what you have instead mm. of just being responsible? Um, or, like, how do you... How does he react when he doesn't get what he wants? Mm. You know, those type of things. Those are the things I just pay attention to. Okay. Okay. That's nice. That's nice. What do you think, babe? Um, I definitely agree with everything she has said. When I was younger, I definitely did look at looks. and But at the back of my mind, I always remember what my mom taught me and everything. Like, it's all about the personality. It's all about how he treats you, how he treats other people around you. Um, those core values, his upbringing. And um, I study a lot of action. I study, um, uh, I don't want to say posture, but just um, body language, right? So, you know, maybe saying he may be saying one thing, but his actions say otherwise. Mm. And I'm always like on point with the red flags and everything, but um, I definitely pay more attention to behavioral type stuff, mm. more so than. Um, the whole look, and he, but my number one thing too, I want to make sure that he is financially stable because I'm coming from that type of background. 
Mm. I don't, you know, it's not, you know, Africans in general too, you know, we know that um, you, d- you want somebody better than your father. Right? So. Mm. Okay, that's a harsh, oof. So, when you say like that and you see someone that has the potential to become like that but hasn't reached that point, are you going to say, nah, I'm going to wait? No, you got to be patient with that person because you see and you understand that, hey, yeah, my father, my parents were here once before. Okay. But as my dad got to his prime where he got really out there um, or up there, that's when you see that, okay, yeah, when my husband is at this level, Mm. I need him better than my father. Just like you want for your kids to be better than you. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I see. Mm-hmm. Ori, I think you wanted to say something too. Oh, I was clapping. Oh, um, you were. I, oh, yeah, I, I didn't sure. even look at. It. I was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I clap on here. <laughs> oh, true. 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 Yeah, so. That's. I mean, de- I like what she said. Mm-hmm. Like, like definitely paying attention to his actions, because especially for. Um, Nigerian men, they talk a lot of talk, but like Mm -hmm. you pay attention to what they do because that is what, you know, differentiates what he really thinks about you versus what he's just saying. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. That's a good one. Okay. And you guys mentioned financials. That's a very strong point, especially for women too, because you definitely want to have that security. You want to have that that safe that that mental stability that emotional balance and at the same time that logical you know progress which everybody wants and needs but also how financially stable is financially stable mm. when you can live below your means and you pay your bills with no problem yeah i think um when you can afford rent consistently without right. like sacrificing some other major thing Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like you can pay all your main you you can pay all of your basic bills and still have a little bit left over now of course i prefer someone who has a lot left over Mm -hmm. but i know the times are hard we're in a pandemic Mm -hmm. um so it's really about watching how the person manages their money because people um spend money based on their emotions like we're very emotional spenders so if he has a good control over his spending, then he's probably like level headed and like he thinks before he acts. So I think it just shows other strengths as well. Mm, I like that point. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Because cause now when you see somebody spending, because a guy who wants to go to the club, find you, spend money on you right there and then, it's like, it, it's like a good thing in their heads but for the woman it's like how many times are you going to keep doing this yeah yeah you know him knowing that he only has $500 left in his account but he's trying to take a vacation to um to I don't know Miami and he's taking uh, money from his credit card like right, get right. your priorities straight you know that's it right and spoiling a woman once in a while is good but I want you to like I would feel more loved if you like planned to spoil me like you saved up for it versus if you put yourself more in debt because like what are we gonna do get married and be in debt together no (laughs) 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 so I'd rather you save up and do what you can afford than like try and ball out and then not be financially stable yeah yeah that's that's a that's a perfect way to cap this conversation because mm-hmm. it it now makes more sense because the guys instead of them chasing or more so you know trying to find oh, the right one like they all say it's more so how do you find yourself and how you put yourself first and that's how the woman is going to find you because like you said if you're level headed if you're able to make financial decisions you won't be at the bar at one a.m. you know just I mean, it's people do that, but you can you can think about if you're there for a reason, be there for that reason. But if you're there because you're frivolously spending, or you're just trying to l- catch attention, or just be, you know, you know, sporadic, then it means that you can really be sporadic with your finances, which can hurt finances in the long run because relationships really sink when finances are not talked about. So, yeah. Finance is a big issue, not just in 
you know, uh, dating or boyfriend girlfriend, but also you know, married couples go through it. So it's good to um, set some kind of financial tone or trend even before getting married, especially if you're courting. Um, if you have a joint account, see how there's you know, see how you guys work together with. Um, just little by little um, so it's not an issue um, in marriage and just compromise and just being open you know even if you have to go through some kind of like monthly budget each month okay beginning of the month what bills are we paying um, can we afford this can we afford that how can we make more money should we invest in this thing um, how's the savings going is it growing or is it um, decreasing you know um, or even if it's every other month, but at least have that conversation and be as open as tra and, and transparent. Like, oh my gosh, I have a um, hundred thousand um, student loans. You know, don't hide any finances. My credit, I owe this much with credit. I have this many credit cards because yeah. once you start keeping financial secrets, it's gonna it's gonna take a toll in the relationship, the marriage, and. That's how it opens up other can of worms and you're allowing the devil to come destroy something that God has put together. So just being very transparent with finances, I think is very important in relationship. Yeah. Marriage. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Especially as a man, you have to understand that if your finances are down, your home is down. And when your home is down, it, it's really hard to get back up with a foundation that's so, you know, rocky and sloppy. It's not it's not really, really the best option because that's when you start to actually lose trust, especially with your community. Your other friends, even guys will be looking at you like, oh, boy, like, why are you not styling up? Why are you not being like others? Why are you not taking care? Like your responsibility as a man is to first be responsible, first of all. So. If you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your woman, you can't take care of, of your family, and definitely it's, it's just a downhill from there. So I agree with what everybody has said, and it, it has been a, a great opener. So I, I hope these tips have been able to help you, and I just hope you guys find the right ones because, yeah, it takes a long time, but with prayer and with faith and just being yourself, I think you can really, really get to the top of the mountain. So, um, yeah, that's what I'll say for now. And, um, Ori, would you like to say anything before we go? Um, no, this is a great conversation. Thanks for inviting me, guys. Ooh, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Bye. All right, bye. So, yeah, guys. We had a great time on the Play Radio Show, and I'm about to take off. I'm about to, you know, leave the scene. So it's been real. You guys rewind, enjoy this conversation. We're going to be back again. I don't know when, but stay tuned. Deuces. Good night. <laughs>